Hi friends, please subscribe to Amravati Media and press the bell icon for more latest updates. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav is one of the laudable initiatives under the visionary leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister to celebrate and commemorate the completion of the 75 years of independence. This Mahotsav has rightly provided an occasion to rejoice the nation's glorious past, its cultural, social, economic, and scientific achievements. Made during the admirable 75 years, and also to reaffirm our commitment to the nation's progress going forward 25 years into the future. We look at the selfless spirit of the freedom fighters with humility and pride. On this occasion, we honor and salute them. I had the privilege of felicitating the freedom fighters from our state of Andhra Pradesh. At the commencement of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, while commemorating our freedom fighters, I was immensely pleased to visit and pay my respects to Srimati Sita Mahalakshmi, the daughter of late Sri Pingali Venkaya at her native place. Sri Pingali Venkaya, one of the freedom fighters, was also the designer of the national tricolor flag. The place where Sri Pingali Venkaya Garu presented the tricolor flag to Mahatma Gandhi in 1921 is in Vijaywada and it now houses archaeological museum named Bapu Museum. Our government has recently renovated and rededicated the museum to the public. Further, in the memory of great freedom fighters of Andhra Pradesh such as Sri Alluri Sita Ramaraju, Sri Uyalawada Narsimha Reddy, Sri Andhra Kesari Prakasham Pantulgaru, Sri Potti Sri Ramulu, Sri Dugirala Gopala Krishnaya Garu, Sri Ayadevara Kaleshwara Garu, Sri Vavilala Gopala Krishnaya Garu, and other renowned personalities. In their memory, we have been conducting Azadi Ka Amrut Mahotsav celebrations every week through virtual and direct events, and thus far we have conducted 908 such programs in our state. This gives us the opportunity to not only celebrate the selfless lives of the freedom fighters, but to also enable the younger generation to draw inspiration from their lives. Consequently, our endeavor of involving people from all walks of lives and inspiring patriotism in them is being fulfilled. This occasion offers us an opportunity to look back at our nation's journey. As a nation, we have progressed remarkably during these 75 years, and in particular, during these seven and a half years. The GDP at constant prices increased from 2.94 lakh crores in 1950-51 to rupees 145.69 lakh crores in 2019-20. India is now the sixth largest economy in the world. At this crucial juncture, when the road ahead offers many opportunities and poses many challenges, I wish to lay special emphasis on two vital elements to unleash the full potential of our nation. Sustainable development and reduction of economic inequality. It is imperative that while the needs of the present are met through economic progress, the ability of the future generations to meet their needs should not be compromised. The energy sector plays a very key role in socio-economic development. Over the last 15 years, the country's installed power generation capacity has increased from 1,27,423 megawatt to 
3,84,116 megawatt. More particularly, the thermal power generation capacity has increased from 83,982 megawatt to 2,34,058 megawatt during these 15 years, resulting in increased emissions of greenhouse gases threatening the future generations. We have enormous responsibility to formulate policies that would eventually lead to phasing out of coal-based power generation and enhanced reliance on renewable sources for energy needs. However, given the intermittency associated with renewable power sources, storage solutions have to emerge. This is essential to ensure the right balance is struck between meeting the power demand and achieving carbon neutrality. I take this opportunity to convey my appreciation for the initiative of the Honorable Prime Minister on this count. One sun, one world, one grid, popularly spoken as OS, OW, OG. Aiming at, harm, aiming at harnessing clean energy and contributing to sustainable economic progress. By facilitating exchange of power from two time zones, maybe it's a dream today, but one day, considering the fact that the optical fiber grid is a reality, already connecting, con connecting continents, transferring data, this power grid across continents it's not a distant dream, especially when we have leaders like Sri Narendra Modi ji at the helm of affairs. With respect to the problem of economic inequality, I wish to put forth the following. Over the last few decades, several positive changes have taken place. We now have a legal framework conferring right to free education and food security. Increased number of our villages are being electrified and fiber, fiber connected with enhanced, fiber connected to, to these villages with enhanced consciousness for cleanliness and personal hygiene owing to the central government's resolve under the able guidance of Honorable Prime Minister. However, there is one problem that continues to haunt us. The economic growth has not sufficiently trickled down to the poor in the country. The recently published World Inequality Report 2022 estimates that top 10% and top 1% of the country's population hold 57% and 22% of the total national income respectively. Income inequality would result in increased rural indebtedness, lower purchasing power, and reduction in rural aggregate demand. This is a serious problem that deserves immediate attention from all of us as policy makers. In the light of the fragility, the interventions must be made more impactful and identifying and effectively addressing the bottlenecks and thereby making inclusive economic growth possible. Sir, I wish to conclude by saying that we would redouble our efforts to ensure the success of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. I convey my thanks for this opportunity. Look forward to many such occasions where we have a chance to reflect on the past and deliberate on the appropriate course for the future. Jai Hind.